Hi, this is example number five or sec from section 14, 1.123. So we have a here a roller coaster, right? So we have a 800 kilograms roller coaster car that is released from rest from A and it goes and travels all along this uh, track and they, they want us to find the minimum height H at point A, so from where I will release the car, so that the car travels around and inside that loop without leaving the track. So we, want, we don't want that whenever it, we get here, the, the car falls, right? So we want to find that minimum height so that we have enough energy to get here and pass that point. And then we want to find also the velocity at C. We are considering no friction, so this is a, a problem of conservation of energy because we don't have any non-conservative forces that do produce the work. So the only thing that we have is the gravity and velocity. So we will use the conservation energy conservation of energy principle, which is that the energy in the energy, total energy at initial position will be equal to total energy at final position. So our final position is this one here and the initial position is here. So what do we have here? We have velocity zero because it starts from rest, so we can say that this is zero. We can also say that the potential energy, we, we have to put a a reference frame datum right here, so we know that this is zero. So our actually our potential energy is also zero. So we know that our and uh, this is zero. All of that and the kinetic energy will be one half um, the mass, which is given velocity v square, and then we have to know what is uh, our potential energy. So if this is our datum, we know that we have lost potential energy. How much potential energy we have lost? This much, right? And that much is h minus 20 meters, because we know how high is the point B. We just want to find how high has A has to be. So that will be negative, because we lost energy, mg that h, which is h minus 20. We know that velocity V square will be equals to two times gravity h minus 20. However, we have two unknowns because we have the unknown of b and we have the unknown of h. So we have to do a different approach. What we are being asked is that we want to find that height so that it doesn't leave the track. So we will have to do a little bit of an analysis when the car is at b. So when the car is at B, we can imagine that he goes right there, goes up, and it, it stays right there. So I'm going to do my free body diagram when the car is at B. So when I have my car at B, I have a, the gravity, right? And I have a normal force. Right? And that will be equals to the kinetic diagram. Right? And my kinetic diagram, when we have a system that does a curve, it has a curve path, we have two accelerations, one in tangent direction and one in normal direction. So from here, what are our conditions? So we, we will calculate the height for the limit. The limit means that velocity where it would leave the track. So we can actually increase that height over that uh, limit. My limit is that the normal is equal to zero. So when normal is equal to zero, I'm leaving the track. So I want it to be bigger than that. But I'm going to design for that limit so that I can find the minimum. I've at forces in Y, and I notice that this is main, if I put my coordinate system in X and Y, I see that that's MG is equals to negative MAN. 
And as you remember, how much is the value of a normal acceleration? We all know that this is the velocity at B squared over the radius of curvature. And the radius of curvature is given. So here we solve for velocity of B, considering n equals 0. Of course, that uh, mass go away with that mass. Let me substitute that so that you know what I'm doing. That will be square root of 9.8 times 7.5, right? So we, and I get my velocity in B. 8, 5, 7, 8 meters over second. So that's the limit, the velocity, the minimum velocity I have to, to reach point B so that the normal is zero. Any velocity higher than that one will give me to have a normal force. So if I have a normal force, there is contact. So I'm designing for in the limit of losing contact. So now I go back to my first equation. Now that I have a velocity v, then from this equation, I can solve for h, right? So h will be equals to, so I plug in my velocity, I plug my acceleration, and I add 20, and my height is 23.75 meters. So that's the minimum h to lose contact. So that's the minimum. So that was my first part, and they also want us to find the velocity at C, velocity at C, we know that dA plus dA equals dC plus dC, and we already know this is zero, and this is zero, and this will be one half mass velocity C squared plus and of course, I lost energy, right? So it will be minus mg that height that I already know equals zero. So it will be very easy because the only unknown that I have here is dc. Solving for dc, that gives me the velocity at c, which is 21.6 meters 